Good day everyone. Welcome to this presentation. I am Captain Ronnie Rani. In this video I will be explaining solution to problems 4, 5 and 6 on pressure and thrust from exercise 2 in Captain Subramanian's textbook Ship Stability 1. Problem 4 states a rectangular lock gate 40 meters wide and 20 meters high has water of RD 1.010 12 meters deep on one side and 1.020 11 meters deep on the other. Find the resultant thrust experienced and the direction in which it acts. So on the basis of the data given to us in the problem, I have drawn this picture. This is your lock gate. And on the left hand side, we have water of relative density 1.010, which is at a height of 12 meters. On the right hand side, we have water of relative density 1.020 at a height of 11 meters. The dimensions of the lock gate given are breadth 40 meters and height 20 meters. We have to find the resultant thrust experienced and the direction in which it acts. What it means is that we have to find the thrust on acting on both sides of this lock gate and the direction in which it acts will be from the side which has the greater thrust towards the side which has the lesser thrust. So, let us see the solution to this problem. Pressure on the left hand side is equal to depth into density. And that is, once again, we take the depth as half the height. So, 12 meters divided by 2 multiplied by density 1.010 and we get pressure on the left hand side equal to 6.060 metric tons per square meter. The area of the lock gate on the left hand side is 40 by 12 equal to 480 square meters. Therefore, the thrust experienced by the lock gate on its left hand side is equal to pressure into area equal to 660 multiplied by 480 equal to 2908.8 metric tons. Pressure on the right hand side equal to depth into density and once again the depth is at half the height of the underwater part of the lock kit. That is 11 divided by 2 <clears throat> multiplied by the density 1.020 equal to 5.61 metric tons per square meter. Area of the lock gate on the right hand side is length into the height that is 40 into 11 equal to 440 square meters thus giving a thrust equal to pressure into area of 5.61 multiplied by 440 equal to 2468.4 metric tons. As we see from our solutions thus far, the thrust on the left hand side is greater than the thrust on the right hand side by 440.4 metric tons. And the direction of the thrust is from the left hand side to the right hand side. <coughs> Going on to the next problem, problem number 5, a rectangular lock gate 36 meters wide and 20 meters high has fresh water on one side to a depth of 16 meters. Find what depth of salt water on the other side will equalize the thrust. Basis the data given to us in the problem, this is the diagram. On the salt water side, we don't know the depth. The dimensions of the lock gate are 36 meters wide, height 20 meters, the relative density of the salt water being 
1.025 and on the fresh water side the depth is 16 meters the relative density of fresh water being 1. So on the salt water side the solution is as follows pressure is equal to depth into relative density and the depth we have to take at half the depth. So pressure is equal to depth in salt water divided by 2 multiplied by 1.025. Therefore pressure in salt water is equal to depth divided by 2 multiplied by 1.025 metric tons per square meter. Thrust on the salt water side is equal to pressure into area and therefore thrust on the salt water side when we substitute for pressure whatever we have calculated here into this formula for thrust we find that the thrust on the salt water side is equal to depth on salt water side divided by 2 multiplied by 1.025 multiplied by 36 times the depth into the salt water. 36 times depth into the salt water is the area of the lock gate that is under the water. Now working for the fresh water side we have pressure on fresh water side equal to depth multiplied by relative density. <coughs> Depth being 16 meters, we take it at half the depth, that is equal to 16 divided by 2 multiplied by 1. Thus, we have pressure on fresh water side equal to 8 metric tons per square meter. Thrust on the fresh water side is equal to pressure into area, thus giving thrust equal to 8, that is the pressure multiplied by area 36 times 16 equal to 4608 metric tons. Now, what is told to us in the problem is find at what depth of the salt water side will the thrust be equal. Therefore, the thrust on the fresh water side is equal to thrust on the salt water side. So, we have to equate these two to get the final answer of the depth on the salt water side. So let's see thrust on salt water equal to thrust on the fresh water side that is given to us. So when we equate the two thrusts on the salt water and fresh water side we find that the depth on the salt water side is equal to 15.804 meters. Now, just as we have calculated this, let us see what would happen if we had to take the width as 20 meters and the height as 36 meters. Everything else stays the same. It's just that we are turning the lock gate around by 90 degrees. So the height becomes 36 meters and the width becomes 20 meters in the next part that I'm going to show you. You work it out in exactly the same way that we did in the earlier part and you will see that the depth on the salt water side stays the same 15.804 meters. It does not matter whether the lock gate was as is given to us in the problem or we have just turned the lock gate around by 90 degrees. Now we come to problem number 6. The collision bulkhead is triangular in shape. Its maximum breadth now before we go any further, where is the collision bulkhead located? I would like to show you. The collision bulkhead is this bulkhead which I am pointing with my mouse, vertical bulkhead between your four peak tank and the forwardmost cargo hold, number one cargo hold. Showing you another picture, you will understand it also. 
this is your four peak tank and here is your number one cargo hold this bulkhead here is your collision bulkhead this vertical bulkhead here going from the keel all the way up to your deck is your collision bulkhead showing you in a three-dimensional picture this red highlighted triangle is your collision bulkhead it is the bulkhead between your four pick tank and the number one cargo hold so coming back to the problem the problem states that the collision bulkhead is triangular in shape its maximum breadth is 12 meters and its height is 15 meters its maximum breadth is 12 meters and its height is 15 meters okay find the thrust experienced by it if the four peak tank is pressed up to a head of 3 meters of salt water so the collision bulkhead is this dark blue tank in the picture and the four peak tank on the other side of the collision bulkhead is extending up to the red triangle I hope you can understand the drawing in that you have on the screen now we have to find the thrust experienced by it if the four peak tank is pressed up to a head of three meters of salt water what is meant by this head of three meters of salt water is that there is an a water that is filled up which is going over and above its height the height of the collision bulkhead is 15 meters and it is going over and above that by 3 meters so from the base of the triangle till this point over here it is 18 meters the centroid of the collision bulkhead is located at point C which is two third from the apex and one third from the base of the collision bulkhead that is 10 meters from the apex which is pointing downwards or 5 meters from the base and over and above that there is a 3 meters additional head of the water in the 4 peak tank on the other side so basically we have to calculate the pressure and thrust at point C and the height that we have to take will be 5 meters plus the 3 meter additional head of water that is acting on the collision bulkhead due to the water being filled up in the 4 peak tank so let us see the centroid C inside the tank is at one third the height one third the draft that is at 5 meters from the base and outside the tank on the other side we have a 3 meter head therefore the total head of the water above the centroid is equal to 5 plus 3 equal to 8 meters and we have to calculate the pressure and thrust acting at the centroid basis this 8 meters so pressure is equal to depth into density that is 8 into 1.025 equal to 8.2 metric tons per square meter area of the triangle the triangle is of the collision bulkhead that is half base is 12 and height is 15 10 plus 5 that gives us 90 square meters therefore the thrust experienced at point C that is the centroid of the collision bulkhead is equal to pressure into area equal to 90 times 8.2 equal to 
738 metric tons. I hope you have understood the solutions to the problems 4, 5 and 6. Please give me a thumbs up, a like, you can share the video and also subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Take care and goodbye.